Hi friends, welcome to my channel. This is my next video on the Deacon Walk. I will put a link to the playlist underneath and the rest of the Deacons that I've done. I've been following this journey and since last November, so quite a way through now. And today I am looking at the Seven of Wands. And this is how um, astrologically it is assigned to other cards, namely the Major Arcana. So this one runs until the 22nd of August from around the 12th so 12th to the 22nd ish these days obviously aren't set in stone they change every year but only by about a day or two and these were assigned by the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn and it was to do with magic actually so they were heavily into magic <laughs> and this is one of the ways that they used the tarot cards within that practice, that magical practice, as I understand it. That's not what I'm doing. The reason I'm doing this is to go deeper into the minor arcana, to put more levels into my understanding of how they function within the system of tarot. So with our Seven of Wands, they function with these two cards, these major arcana cards of Strength and the Tower, or in the Thoth version, um, again the tower but with lust and how that translates into the minor arcana card so let's look first at those astrological correspondences so for the astrological sign we have leo which is the strength card and then for the planetary association we have mars and that is the sign to the tower card so I'm looking at here the Black Moon Astrology cards from Susan Shepherd. The guidebook to this deck is incredible and gives a real good insight into why these um, are assigned to this card. Although it doesn't say that specifically, it's actually an astrological deck. It really does illuminate for me how they, those associations play into the card. So because it's a wand card, it's a fire element. So you can see a very fiery image here. And that is all about desire. And we know that the wand suit is all about our will and our desire. And talking of will, Leo is called here, I will, on the Leo card. Then we have the sun because the sun is a sign, is a um, Leo is a sun sign. So here we have spirit and a very big sun. <laughs> and then Mars is force, which we see here. So as you can probably see, they're all very uh, fiery cards. Lots of fiery energy going on here, uh, both from the planetary sign as well as the zodiacal sign so we've got a lot of energy going on here in this card so if i just going to read you a couple of not too much just a couple of passages from each of these in this astrology deck i think you'll see what i'm talking about so let's start off with the sun the sun is our spirit our personality. It, represent, it represents the animating flash of life. It is also the need to express who we are. In ancient belief, the sun is Amun-Ra, the god among all gods, whose name leads to Amen, or Amen, which is the word at the end of the prayer. It's the ability to transform and rise again. It represents our health, vitality and dynamism. The sun is our strength and what we put our focus on. It's our universal spark called spirit. It enlivens the body. And here we've got um, what looks like a very much a warrior energy, if you can see it in the background, holding this sort of staff here. And that sort of echoes this giant here holding his staff. And I say giants because if you look at the proportions in this card, 
and that hill <laughs> and that river running through it that is a giant there so he is fully in his power there fully in his son and full of desire desire to achieve whatever it is he set his mind on which is also a leo trait so he's straddling both the earth and the water so both his emotions and his grounding he's either rallying the troops here or defending his position he's either being attacked and defending or getting ready to attack which is very much Mars energy, isn't it? So if we look at Mars here, the keyword is force. And this, it sort of reminds me of Wallace, you know, William Wallace, uh, Braveheart, Mel Gibson, <laughs> rallying the troops. And that's the sort of energy that I'm getting from this image sparking people to life you know we're all here in uh six of wands which i talked about obviously in the last deacon and we're all very happy and everything's nice and william wallace has come along and gone nope <laughs> we're not going to put up with the way things are and he has really sparked people into life you know encouraged them to act um, and i'll talk a little bit more about why i'm thinking that as well in a sec i just want to talk some more about the astrology so mars in this um, deck is amazing it says this mars card suggests there is something you might have to fight for something you might have to fight for it really aligns doesn't it we're fighting here we're sending out sparks of energy the red planet fiery mars is named after the god of war and agriculture all festivals for Mars in ancient Rome were in March. So they're on the march in Mars. Uh, the month that heralds in the solar time of Aries. So Mars rules Aries. Mars makes us shove hard in a way that other planets don't. One might call him the bully among the planets. Mars is the ruler of sexuality and aggression. It is a lustful planet that drives us allows us to face the difficult challenges in life and to follow our passions no matter what stands in the way if we did not have a mars we could not know how to fight and this is clearly a fighting stance this card could also mean to push back in terms of defense so not only attack but defense as well so when mars is strong in a chart or a reading you may either face aggressive situations with a need to confront or defend or an intense rousing sexual encounter which may or may not involve romance. How interesting is that? <laughs> Mars indicates overwhelming attractions. This is a time when you feel not only forced, but driven. It's time to consider goals and desires and not allow them to fall into the shadows. Right now, action is needed. So, very much a card of action. And then we have Leo, which... The key word for Leo is I will. And I talked about Leo, obviously, in the last deacon. Eight different decks. So let's have a look at Leo in this one. It says it's better to be looked over than to be overlooked. <laughs> that, that's May <Mae> West. <laughs> the card of honour and strength. So we're defending our honour here, possibly. Proud and strong, those born under the sign of Leah are all about integrity, which again goes along with that William Wallace story, doesn't it? They're ruled by the sun, which is a light and a force we cannot live without. They are warm and vital personalities, so they're an ideal um, archetype to actually stir the masses into action. They intend to mark their, make their mark on the world, have a secret wish to be admired, and they want their time on earth to mean something. Not willing to be another link in the chain, Leos want to stand apart from the rest. When the Leo card comes up in a reading, expect to be at the centre of something and be recognised. So, we can clearly see, in my opinion, the way that the astrological correspondences align to the Seven of Wands energy. Absolutely. For me, it just 
stands out. This is illustrated really well in Poppy Palin's Everyday Enchantment Tarot, where the Seven of Wands is a demonstration. It's people actually standing up to save the woodland against the forces of the police. Um, so we've, we've got attack and defend here, haven't we? Because we're bringing all our energy into play to save something that's worth saving. Um, and this is all part of that integrity. Something that means a lot to us. And we're being defended, or the police here are defending the builders, probably the developers that want to actually destroy this woodland in order to build whatever that may be, a motorway or housing project, displacing all these animals in the process. So these people strongly believe in defending this to the point where they're actually camped out in the woodland, not allowing the developers in. So it's looking here at the New Era Elements Tarot, which is a, a Thoth-based deck. This is by Ellen Eleonor F. Piper. I've no idea how you actually pronounce that name. I'm so sorry. But here in the Seven of Wands or the Seven of Fire, we see it as bravery and we've got two firefighters here braving again, um, as in Poppy Palings, not for their own benefit, but for the benefit of others. And it says in the book, not going down without a vice, heroism, standing firm for what we believe. And the meaning, we've entered the fray believing we can win, but now we realise that the odds are too great. And if you can see, it is an overwhelming scenario they're going into there. Yet we go on regardless, which is what firefighters do, don't they? True bravery consists not in going into a fight where we are assured of victory, but in persist persisting against all odds. And presumably those six ones are the odds we're facing. So it says two firefighters are walking forward into heavy and dense smoke that shrouds the fire they are fighting. They cannot see what danger awaits them, but they move ahead intent on doing their job of saving lives and property. This white sage tarot is pretty much based on chakras, um, but it, I think it's quite interesting the way it's um, talked about in this deck. This is Teresa Hutch. Get in focus. Maybe. There we go. Teresa Hutch. Um, seven of ones. And it's nice that we've got some information on chakras within this little deck as well. My favourite four card. I love that. But yeah, I like dogs, don't I? There we go. Seven of ones. And it seems a very simple image, doesn't it? So we've just got this sort of splash of colour here on the seventh wand. Um, you don't get a lot of information in the book, but what you do get is really good. So, upright competition of hand. Although it can be a challenge in the end, you will be thankful that your voice has been heard. Take a stand and hold your own. Harness your focus on your Manipura energy centre located in your solar plexus. And so it talks about the solar plexus as yellow light. So the solar plexus is all about who you are and the path ahead. It's the sun centre. Fire energy. Take action toward your own truth. So again, it really does align um, using the modality of chakras so that's another sort of element you can use within your readings which can be quite enlightening as well as the crystals and everything else which are <laughs> i just think it's all very fascinating the mars energy is all about a fight energy uh, a willingness to push forward in the face of adversity um, here and the policeman obviously in that poppy paling card Mars is a volatile planet, it's chaotic, but it's active, it's fast, it's energetic and, com you know, it encourages combat. Mars is a war planet. 
and strength, well, that's all about perseverance and endurance, not backing down. We're not backing down from the fight here. Enduring, carrying on, having the passion and the confidence to actually stand up for ourselves and for others that can't stand up for themselves. That inner strength, that fight to achieve our desires and maintain that inner strength. Mars wakes the beast. <laughs> Mars wakes the beast. Look at the face there. So much determination, so much courage. So is this dude rallying the troops or defending his own high position? Well, it's definitely an attack energy, as we can see in the Thoth card. Crowley says it's a large, crude, uneven club here. The first weapon to hand, which makes me think this was a, a very rash decision. This wasn't thought through, actually. It's just this combative energy, this, the sparks that are flying here, was wasn't thought through and I think that echoes here as well in the right way Smith because of the different shoes here and maybe you know is in a rush to defend themselves or in a rush to rally the troops whichever one it, one it is uh, in so much of a rush that you know didn't put his boots on or his shoes on or you know they're odd <laughs> so looking at this card um, in relation to the last card, the Six of Wands, where it was all very nice and balanced and those candle flames were flickering lovely. Now we've got this um, combative energy, this crude wand here. To me, that ace is defending the right to grow. Because if we stay nice and comfortable, we, will we won't progress. We will stay stuck, um, which is all very nice. But in order to actually get anything done we need that um, that force we need to go forward with vigor and valor bravery and even these glyphs here look they're out of balance normally they're on the top and the bottom of a card um, you usually see that in the pips but um, here they're actually on a diagonal now whether that is something to do with the tree of life I'm not sure because if you look at this one, it's also in the same configuration. Mars here to the Leo, Mars to Leo down there. So I actually haven't had time to look, but I've got a feeling that might be something to do with the position on the tree of life, possibly. Well, I'm looking a bit. This impact here will have a definite influence on the stability that we found in these six ones here behind. And even the colour has changed. That purple has now become really dark as if storm clouds are now um, starting to appear. And in the Crowley uh, strength card, it's called lust. And so we need that lust, that passion, that drive to actually implement this sort of change here that we're looking for. And the ones here are defending themselves because they're a lot closer together than they were on the six. It's almost like they're rallying their forces together um, to either defend themselves against, against this crude ace here or to back, back up the energy, you know, to support it, you know, bringing it together so we can support this new energy going forward. And the interesting thing about the defence sort of um, aspect of this card is on this one, the ends of the was ones, here, the phoenix ones, have got this little curve here. And Egyptians, um, when I looked it up, the Egyptian ones, that was actually for holding snakes down. <laughs> so you didn't get bitten. So that's a form of defence as well, isn't it? And like I talked about in the last decan, Leo likes to be the centre of attention. They like to be in the spotlight. And so we see that here, don't we? Because this guy is definitely, this or girl, is definitely the centre of attention here. And this wand here is making sure everybody knows they're there, <laughs> sending sparks out. Here I am. And it's quite interesting how these six wands here actually can't reach the guy with the ace. So just looking at the tree of life here, this is from Phantasmagoria, uh, Ian Daniel's Vampire Tarot. 
and if we look at the seven we're at Netzach which is Venus and I've written it in myself <laughs> um, so if this is pointing down to Venus it's pointing actually up to Mars which is Tower isn't that interesting so Mars and Venus in are they in opposition or are they in cohorts together this is well Venus is all about the emotions instincts desire and passion so that goes along with um, the energy of strength as well doesn't it so yeah, I just thought I'd have a quick look at that <laughs> so if we think about the defensive aspect of this card as opposed to the aggressive Mars um, outward aggressiveness that I've been talking about so if we think about now a defensive position here defending against this new influence then I think the light seers um, shows it quite well here we've got the tower and the strength so we've got two sides here we've got the lion which is the aggressive side and we've got the lamb which is the passive side here on the strength card great in itself and then we've also sort of see it here as well because this little squirrel and the little butterflies here would be quite a passive element maybe to the aggressive element here in the lightning and then in the actual card itself the seven of wands we see a figure here that has totally cushioned themselves and protected themselves from the influence of those other six wands in fact two four six all seven ones are here so this person here isn't even holding the wand they've cushioned themselves against this influence here and formed a protective bubble around themselves they're even turning their head away from that influence and here we've got that solar plexus uh, manipura chakra once again that we saw in our white sage tarot echoed there so totally centered in their sun energy in their own integrity really nice depiction there so another tarot deck i was looking at was the nameless one by zia hunt um, this deck here i've got the big book that goes with it as well which is so so interesting but anyway this is the card for the seven of wands and actually we have the tower on there as well and zia talks in the book about the uh, ones being made of oak from an oak tree and how the oak tree was one of the trees most likely to actually be struck by lightning <laughs> which i thought was really interesting uh, that you'd use that reference there and we're flying the flags of victory here and we even have oak leaves on those flags so this is about withstanding external pressures and she talk zia talks about um, robin hood that the forest in the Robin Hood story was an oak forest. And of course, Robin Hood was defending the poor against the rich. And he was, there were, you know, his bands of merry men were willing to actually use violence if needed, which is the Mars energy. And it's about defending that right, not only of the self, but for others as well. And the acorns are all about potential, the potential to, you know, to reach the leaves of growth and life and the ivy all here is persistent it's persistent growth and I know that firsthand because I'm actually fighting some ivy in my garden at the moment so I thought that's really really uh, an interesting take and a different take um, using the elements from the other cards for the message here so that's the nameless one Zia Hunt and of course we have a sigil there all the cards have sigils on them it's a really really chunky deck this one i've done a walkthrough of it when i first got it and uh, i couldn't fit it all on camera that and the uh, and the book that goes with it we've got a little guidebook and that's nice but um there's a massive one that you can buy with it as well called a grimoire and i couldn't fit it on the camera screen it's so huge 
Um, I've just done a few days ago, actually, a walkthrough of this Egyptian Star Oracle by Travis McHenry. And I thought I'd have a little look and see how the deacons in this deck relate to the deacons of the Golden Dawn. And we've got, for the beginning of this deacon, we have this God card here and its removal of obstacles, which I thought was, was pretty interesting, isn't it? Because it does sort of align, really. So let's just have a little, a little look at what it says in the in the guidebook here. It's pronounced Shetwi. And its influence lasts five days. And its minerals are carnelian and gold. And I thought that was interesting because in the Crystal Magic Tarot, carnelian, oops, there, carnelian is actually assigned to the strength card. So... There's a little correlation there. Um, it says here, the Shetwe, oh, how do you say it? Shetwe was the head of, <laughs> I don't know, the slaughterers and the demons, assigning them tasks of life and death. They would sound scary at first, but consider that the slaughterers were tasked with destroying the enemies of Egypt and the demons were responsible for protecting Egypt from evil in general. So you might think of them running offence and defence for the benefit of the country as a whole. So it does actually align, doesn't it? So in that spirit, Shetwe relates to overcoming obstacles. The card depicts two animal herders trying to move a giraffe with ropes, although it might just as easily have pictured them trying to prod a large tortoise into moving faster. <laughs> Everyone faces challenges that seems insurmountable from time to time. And moving past them usually requires strength, intelligence, or both. So it does align, absolutely. And if we look at that as uh, from a sort of an inner perspective as well, not just from an outer perspective, then it could also mean the demons that we face, our inner demons, if you like, that we face, the challenges that we face from our own negative self talk, maybe self-doubt you know when we feel like we're indecisive we get that hopeless feeling but it's about getting the upper hand and looking at the bigger picture and, and certainly a giraffe from this viewpoint will see the bigger picture <laughs> so yeah about just staying determined and optimistic and knowing that we can overcome even if we feel outnumbered at times by our own even our own thought processes i mean these here, ones can't even reach us, can they? So let's finish with our crystals from the Crystal Magic Tarot correspondence. This deck here, K. Ward Claire Gregory. And as you can see, for the tower, we've got Black Tourmaline. For strength, like I said, we have Quark Carnelian, and we've got Blue Kyanite here for. Uh, card um, see if I can find some way, to, some way to show you there you go blue kyanite beautiful huh mm -hmm. very fragile actually which is interesting that they've chosen quite a fragile crystal to represent a strong energy and look at this this warrior person here for the seven of wands so I thought that's that's a really interesting take and yeah we've still got carnelian which we've had for the last well, the three deacons and we have the tower energy here as well which i've spoken about before so we'll just look at the seven of wands see what the book says about the crystal it says blue kyanite is a useful crystal to have in an argument because it deflects negative energy and helps you to communicate if you need to facilitate a difficult conversation, have a confrontation, looming, or a need to make yourself heard by someone who isn't great at listening, Blue Kyanite will be the sword at, at your side to take into battle, dispelling fear and cutting through misunderstanding. This icy to midnight blue crystal can help you find your voice and speak your truth honestly and openly without fear, whilst dispelling confusion and frustration from all sides. So I hope you enjoyed that. That's my little look and investigation, if you like, into our Seven of Wands. That's just an amazing card, isn't it? Very much uh, 
the warrior energy, the strength energy needed to confront and the Mars energy. So yeah, anyway, that's my little look at the Seven of Wands as it relates to their decanic associations. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next time, friends, bye.